welcome to my channel. My hair is like super busy, it's so warm in here. <laughs> uh, hello, uh, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kika. I am broadcasting once again from my blanket fort, lockdown life. This is where I live now. <laughs> Today I want to talk about some easy posing tips for self-portraits and hear me out here. When it comes to taking self-portraits or being in photos, most people tend to be very self-critical and when I ask my mom or friends, um, most people will just be like, ah, I don't want to be in the picture, I always look so bad and kind of it evokes all kinds of negative emotions for most people, I've found, and I definitely feel like somebody who is not at all natural in front of the camera or confident or anything like that, but I have been taking my own self-portraits and really learned to take photos that I truly love. And I have some tips and tricks that I want to share with you. These are tried and tested uh, tips that I've found from just looking at photos, from looking at YouTube videos, what models say, and I've just gathered the most practical ones and that helped me the most and I want to share them with you. Now, I realized that making a video of self-portraits can come across quite vain and self-obsessed and I'm for sure somebody who, when I look at the whole kind of selfie culture and influencer industry, there's so much vanity and so much broadcasting and just kind of me, me, me. Um, and yes, that's for sure one part of it. But then the other part of it is that also documenting our days and having the powerful tool of maybe expressing something creatively with a self-portrait um, is so, so empowering and it's so wonderful. I really uh, love to look at photos and usually photos with people that tell a story in them um, and then having myself as a model that I can do it by myself I think is just so, so empowering, it gives so much energy and just like also I guess the control freak in me kind of likes that. I And, and also um, I wouldn't ever have the money to hire a photographer all the time or going to like some kind of professional photo studio or even be very confident. I don't think I would enjoy that process so much, like being just in front of the camera as the model. That's not really, I, I want to kind of have both of it. So learning to take yourself portraits, it's more than just sharing a selfie and wanting everybody's attention or being popular online. No, it's much more about sharing some of your story um, and connecting with people. And especially in times like this, I think that is so valuable. We're all finding. All right, are you ready for it? Let's get to the tips. So the first one is to find a photo of yourself that you love, or if not love, at least not hate. So this is something that I started to do when I started to take my own self portraits. I would maybe have a handful, very few photos of myself that I liked, but then the ones that I liked, I really tried to look like, okay, why did it work in this one? What is it that I'm happy with here? So that could be that, for example, this photo that I thought was very cute that my sister took of me just using, I think, an iPad <laughs> back in the day, it was in 2017, or maybe I had a camera already. Anyways, beside the point. <laughs> and I think because um, actually my whole face isn't visible in it, so it's actually mostly my eyes and they're kind of smiling, so I really like that aspect of it. And then I've used that uh, hiding partially in my photos as a theme throughout. Another one that I've noticed that I really like is when I look down, I think it just calms down my face, that is pretty vivid otherwise, so then that's something I use quite often. So really try to find a photo and try to see what is the angle like, maybe what is the mood or emotion, um, your facial, facial expressions, maybe the light or the angle, all these little things will be clues in you finding what kind of photos of yourself that it is that you like and then you can try to mimic that or use that information in the photos that you will take. The second tip is to have a thought or a story in your head. So the camera sees everything. This is not only true for actors or actresses that being on film, you can really see in the eyes so much. So just having some kind of a story or thought in your head when you're taking the photo or having your photo taken can have such an impact on just everything in your face and how your whole body posture and stature will just change and it can be very slight changes but it will make the biggest difference. It's all in the details my friend. So just taking a moment and trying to come up with a story or thinking what is the intention or what is happening here and you could even think of like an emotion or oh, maybe this was a birthday party and nobody came to it and now you're sad or this is the happiest day of your life because you've just found out that you're going to get a cat, you know. <laughs> it can be very silly things but um, those I think always work for me and also kind of waiting around or being bored or being calm or enjoying the sunshine, whatever it is that works for you, having that story will just also help you feel more natural and know what direction to take in your photo. Next up, looking natural takes some work. Oh yes, we're gonna talk about 
the face. Now, when it comes to the face, we want to look natural, and that usually means that we have to just take a deep breath and think of softening the face. And I like to envision just my whole face kind of melting, almost like ice cream on a sunny day, and try to think of relaxing my jaw and also my eyes, and that my eyes don't become too glazed over. And instead of looking at the lens, just really look into it. Or if you're looking at something, not be too self-conscious about just pretending to be looking and kind of here is me showing I look at something but actually look at it and engage with it um, those little details and will make a huge difference in the photo then one thing I know <laughs> that a lot of models do is they kind of have their mouth a little half open I sometimes look like a dead fish when I do this so it doesn't always work instead what I tend to do is try to kind of relax my mouth but then have that moment when you're gonna start to smile like a little tiny smile I think that works quite nicely or I like that uh, and also with the eyes that instead of just having them be completely just dead just I don't know these little tiny muscles you can sort of zoom in or, or when you're like almost like when you're what is it called like squeezing or no squinting like a little squint and a little smile that's kind of <laughs> what I like that's my uh, self-portrait face I go to and then another tip is to push your chin forward a little bit and down so that will just elongate your neck a little bit and usually will create quite a nice elegant line in your photo. Next up, play with tiny angle changes. So if you're taking your self-portrait by yourself, you most likely will have your camera on a tripod or that it will be static and you will have to do the little angle changes. Normally a photographer, they will you know, run around and kind of switch the angle, but here you have to sort of figure out what angle works for you. And I think, um, you know, when the models say like, ooh, know your angles, I think this is what they mean. <laughs> and most people will have one side they think is their good side and one is the bad side. So they will kind of use that one to have that in a photo. Um, but really the slightest little changes can make a huge difference in how you feel you look in the photo. So play around with that and take a while to sort of figuring that out. Um, and you will just see that you'll probably be able to take photos that you really love much faster and you can just use the same angle you know if it works then use it <laughs> next up think about elongating your body so we talked a lot about the face but the whole body of course you have to do something with that as well so the most important thing is just thinking of elongating using that core support and thinking of your spine you know reaching up and down and just trying to be a bit of a princess queen kind of very old school style you know good posture that stuff is it really works in photos like sometimes I try to take photos where I sort of let myself go and kind of in the mood but then when I look back at them it just doesn't that even if I maybe have the emotion of like oh but uh, this is like I'm so into it it just doesn't translate well when it's visual so you really have to think about elongating your body and long long lines <laughs> Next up, coming up with poses. So it's really about envisioning how your body's silhouette will look in the photo. So kind of try to almost think uh, two-dimensionally, or that's what I usually try to think. So for example, creating triangles in your body what, by placing, for example, your hand on your hip or just with your feet or just in general, like creating triangles is one really good tip. Another one is to create S curves uh, with your body so that you just have a little bit more movement in there and you can play around with it and also arches uh, so you know arching back and again elongating your limbs and your spine are all things that will help you to find some poses and also you know don't be afraid to be weird with it and try out things that maybe aren't natural at all and on the other hand try to be also very natural very casual about it and just see what works for you and what feels good. Next up, play with props and your environment. So having a prop can help so much and you can actually think of the prop as the main character or the kind of hero in the photo. So you don't have to be so self-conscious of if you really choke up and like, oh, you get really stuck. Then think instead of that it's the prop that is the main focus. So you could look at that or maybe using it in an interesting way, you know, having it in your hand or back or, you know, weird things <laughs> that you could do with it and the same goes for your environment so maybe taking a chair or if you're lying down so just how you could place yourself in relation to these things 
and again don't be afraid to go weird with it like if you look at any fashion magazines like the poses they have sometimes look so uncomfortable but still look so good <laughs> so just have fun with it and don't worry about it looking weird or strange next up movement so you can put your camera in burst mode and move twirl jump walk run all these things will look so good in a photo if you can capture that moment and will just help you to not be so self-conscious about it and maybe if you start overthinking usually then I just like to move about a little bit you know like shake it off and it will usually also gives you some direction in the pose so if you're walking you know you have a direction a sense of purpose in the photo and you don't get so static and still and just like stuck with the whole thing my last tip to you is to focus on the things you like so kind of what I said in the beginning it's so easy to become self-critical and just focus on the things that maybe you would like to change or you don't like in a self-portrait when you take one but try to instead focus on the small things and finding things that you like or that you enjoy or you think that hey here is something that I could maybe take further and work on so one thing for example that I like is to use my hand in my photos that's not even maybe a self-portrait but I call it a self-portrait because I am still having a part of my body in my photos uh, or also that I often use that I have just my back towards the camera and kind of my hair is the center of the attention <laughs> I quite like those photos so then I will use that often um, and yeah it's just so easy that we get caught up in this just kind of having like hateful thoughts about ourselves which I don't think is healthy and this culture is definitely not helping with it kind of showing these perfect people photoshopped and all that even though I think it is changing with social media and we're kind of seeing more sort of realistic how it actually is um, so yeah just be kind to yourself in this process all right I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was valuable for you and that I would be really really interested to hear your own thoughts on this or if you're taking self portraits and also I know I often get messages from people saying like oh like I but I feel ridiculous or to post in this online or like the fear of what will people think of me if I post this photo and I would just encourage you to go for it I definitely felt really almost embarrassed when I started to post more kind of artsy photos on my Instagram account back in the day but then I also decided you know what like this is something that is important for me and it gives me a lot of joy and I'm really curious about this thing so just allow yourself that space to discover those things and instead of the thoughts of other people who are you know they don't have to live your life <laughs> and usually people don't even care that much to be honest um, so you know if you have those kind of thoughts then I definitely can relate to that but then my encouragement to you would be to do it anyways if it feels important for you and that it's something that you are uh, interested in uh, yeah just you know take charge and live your life <laughs> all right on that note I'm gonna finish this video thank you so much for watching and as always if you want to see more of my stuff come say hi I'm over at School of Akika on Instagram all right see you in the next one take care bye there's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.